Welcome back. So if you, if you recall last time I was uh, trying to figure out what this problem was where the engine was dying um, at higher fuel pressures. So what I did on Wednesday was I went back to the original tune where I hadn't changed anything and tried some run-ups and it actually started happening this time even at 90 uh, megapascal. So I was starting to believe that I had a fuel starvation issue even though the flows showed that everything was flowing okay. I was starting to think that I was just down on fuel pressure. Um, and then uh, I was talking, or I actually had some correspondence with uh, Les and um, one of his um, guys that he's been working with, at Phil at Exergy Performance. And uh, we sort of came to the conclusion that that was the problem. And then Les looked through the, um, the service manual for the engine and figured out that the fuel pressure pump, the supply pump, the, the lift pump should be supplying um, 4 bar which is almost 60 psi and the one I had was only supplying maybe 10 psi at most. So uh, and uh, I also looked through the uh, this documentation that was available uh, online as you can uh, see here and I also noticed that I had some of the plumbing incorrect as well for uh, on the back side of the injectors so you see there's a the injectors where they return um, or actually this yellow line here that's basically the return feed from the fuel pump and I had that set up correctly that was um, returning to the rail there and then going back to the tank uh, teeing back to the tank um, but what I had wrong was these injectors there uh, there's this loop going back to this fuel filter and I didn't have that fuel filter I've got my fuel filter in a different spot uh, prior to the feed uh, coming from the tank but anyway there's this um, check valve there that the um, injectors feed into and the idea is that the fuel pump pressure um, coming coming from the um, boost pump there or the lift pump that actually feeds into this check valve and provides back pressure onto the injectors and without that back pressure there's a lot of work having to go on to um, push the injectors uh, all the way open so I had two different things going on here I didn't have enough fuel pressure and I also didn't have um, enough back pressure on the injectors so uh, on Wednesday, on Thursday actually I managed to get a hold of uh, this pump this is a FAS pump and apparently this one there you could adjust the pressure up to 60 psi so I need about it's actually 70 psi so I need about 60 so I picked that up locally and then actually to get this filter which is um, off of uh, you know Volkswagen Tuareg um, and to tie it into the mix to actually you know get my plumbing router directly I had to drive all the way to Nashville for that and so that was a pretty much yesterday I was just driving all day long uh, Anyway, so there's the old pump there, and that was maybe putting out 10 psi at best, even though it's 100 gallons an hour. So that's going to come out of there, and then uh, this is the main feed line that's going to be basically routed into this uh, filter that I got, and then um, the other side of that will go to the main feed, and then the return will go in there. So what I had to do was uh, drain some fuel out of um, the whole system there uh, so I could disconnect everything without fuel sort of going er everywhere and I realized what I, sh I really need is a cutoff valve prior to that fuel filter um, so I can you know work on stuff like this without having to drain fuel so there's the pump installed and right when I was getting ready to actually uh, hook it up and test it um, I found out that it doesn't uh, it's not the right one which was really a pain I actually talked to their support people and they said yeah oh, yeah that one only goes to 30 psi at most maybe 25 um, so yeah I was a bit disappointed and uh, which means I had to send that one back or take that one back and then I had to order the correct one uh, which is actually going to be a bit longer so uh, while I was doing all that I've created a little short splice here and I also put this extra valve that I had in place here so now I can actually uh, turn off the fuel and this is the view from the other side so I can turn off the fuel now if I want and that'll be safety wide open don't worry um, it's not going to accidentally cut off fuel uh, so I can turn off the fuel now if I want to work on this stuff now which is uh, advantageous and you see I've kept this loop lower now because I was a bit worried there was a the loop went up so high like that that potentially uh, the, the feed would have to pull over the top of that 
that thing and it might create an air bubble in there so I've kept it lower so it's basically the highest point now is the midpoint of the tank anyway so because that pump was the wrong one and didn't it only went up to 25 psi or so I've pulled it out of there and the new one's not going to come now until Monday because that has to come from Ohio um, from Summit and uh, I'll when I've got that in there I'll be um, probably going to have to move a couple of things because this new one is an inch and a half taller and the other one was only just going to fit so kind of uh, ruined my plan of getting everything ready by the weekend it's probably going to be you know late Monday before I get it all hooked up so there's the filter and that's going to kind of live around about there and you see it's got the three different uh, connections for it and uh, one's going to go from there uh, up to the feed and then the other one goes to the return which is on the rail there and that provides the back pressure that's required by the injectors and uh, the last one just goes uh, to the lift pump so uh, yeah just gonna get those plumbed in as you can see here and uh, just got that pump just sort of sitting there so there's the feed coming from the lift pump and that goes into one side of the filter and then I've got the return coming back from the rail uh, and that goes into the same side of the filter and then after it goes through the filter that goes to the main feed and there's my uh, flow sensor there so that's all plumbed in there now and uh, I don't really have to do anything else and then back looking there there's the main return and that goes through the the um, sender there and then that's all teed in and goes back to the header tank there it's teed in with that heater loop that I had there before so all that didn't have to change uh, so just a little bit of re-plumbing and stuff there, but uh, um, when I get that new pump on Monday, uh, then I can get that in. And I think this is really going to fix my problem because, um, I, oh, that's a, the other thing I have to do too. I have to put a heavier wire in there to run to this new pump because it runs 60 PSI. It draws a lot more amps than this other one was running. So I'll get all that put in there. And so, yeah, there's the line that that's currently in there it's just not heavy enough gauge to run then I think it's 20 amps or something that this new pump is going to potentially draw uh, maybe 25 so I'm going to gauge it up so I may have to make some adjustments again with this new pump being an inch and a half higher but I'll basically get that hooked up and then I won't have a fuel starvation problem on the engine so a bit of a short video this time but you know it is what it is Anyway, that's the update for this week. Thanks again for tuning in and uh, check back on Tuesday and, uh, and see uh, if I've got this all sorted out. Thanks for watching.